I start out by saying, uh, you know, you want people to buy day passes. Day passes are your bread and butter on an avenue to create a pathway for a client to get a membership. If you have something where you only want to give two day passes a month and then we want to lock people into membership, it's really counterproductive towards that goal. If you sell a person uh, 10 day passes in a month, you've got at 15 bucks a piece, you got 150 bucks right there. That is equivalent to a monthly membership. And if you, you're selling a person 10 day passes in a month, they're on a pathway towards really liking the equipment, liking the facility, being enough in the area for themselves too, for you and them to sell them on the idea of a monthly membership so that they get the perks, uh, so that they can come there more than 10 times and not have to pay more money. So it's a real problem for Alaska Club, I think, when they're in this mindset where, you know, they don't want to do the day passes. You know, you have to, you keep the avenue open for the day passes. People are there, they're using the club, they're using the equipment, they're enjoying it, uh, they're familiar with it, it's their go-to place, they're doing their bodybuilding type programming with the machines and the equipment and the weights that some of the other local facilities don't have. Uh, and they're accustomed to it and they're relying on it and they're going to go ahead and take that next step towards membership. So it's really in the Alaska Club's best interest to structure their business model a little bit more intelligently around that day pass uh the day pass issue. So if you have a $15 day pass first time, first two times, give it to them free, and then it's a $15 day pass, you don't need to cut people off on only two 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 times a month or they have to go be sponsored in by a member a month. That gets into the realm of uh, contrary towards your mission and your goal of getting more memberships. If you have the day pass door open, sure, charge them 15. 15 is a high number, but if you're charging them 15, like I said, it's really clear. If they do 10 in a month, it's 150 bucks. I think the basic, the lowest possible summer monthly Alaska Club membership is 140 a month. So if they do 10 day passes at $15 a month, uh, they've already overspent what the basic membership is. So at that point, if, if I was working in sales for the Alaska Club, it's going to be really easy for me to convince the client to go ahead and become a member. You know, and, and you want a smart business way of doing things. You don't want to alienate, especially I was a past member, they're, they're basically really uh, antagonistic, unprofessional, low people skills. You know, and I almost want to, like, fire those people and train someone else better. Or, like, let me train them better because, you know, you do a little bit of an adjustment there, a little bit of finesse in terms of uh, the way you structure those day passes and stuff. You're going to be pulling in more memberships because it's a, it's a decent facility, you know. Um, and the truth is, for that geographic area in the Matsu Valley, uh, there isn't much for there's body renew there's the rec, you know that's really the place for the bodybuilding program that has has the sort of uh all encompassing in terms of the machines and the equipment and the variety that if you're trying to do you know follow a lot of the programming that uh bodybuilders do that's the place to go i think but the way it's structured with the price and how they lock people to memberships it makes it so that it's not the place to go to for a lot of people, a lot of young people. So I think they really almost should have some incentives and be like, and, and try to create more, uh, more opportunity and get more people to come on a daily basis. Because if you get people coming on a daily basis, you know, if you're only doing it twice, you know, that's not enough. But if you get more people coming on a daily basis, you're going to have that as a pathway and avenue towards those monthly memberships. So if someone, like I said, if someone comes here seven or eight times in a month, maybe the next month they're going to come for 12 or 13 and or 15 or 16 or 17 and then you're going to be able to say, hey, just buy the monthly membership. It's cheaper. You're going to get a member out of that. And you're also going to get someone who is uh, enjoying their experience at the club and who is uh, uh, relying on the equipment at the club and who is positive. It's a positive mutual energy thing and it's not having people at the front desk being uh, unprofessional. It's not people at the front desk not selling, uh, you know, past members day passes and, you know, all of the issues and they have so many bad reviews online. You know, those are things that I think that they need to, to accept the constructive criticism and they need to correct and they need to, you know, work better at, uh, building an avenue towards memberships. You know, if their membership prices are so high, I think that that's something that they need to tweak. They need to create an avenue additionally for summer people to have a more reasonable thing. So if you've got a month to month membership thing in the summer, you know, I think they do, and I think it's 140 or something like that. But I think that they need to they need to really target that demographic and market of people who are up here for the summer and working in the tourism or the firefighter, this, the other thing, or just like whatever. And, uh, and you know, and 
capture all of those people in, and let them work out at the facility and get money from that. You know, because the year-round population in Alaska versus the summer population in Alaska are uh, dramatically different, you know, especially in tourist-type towns. And granted, Fairbanks, the Valley, and Anchorage, and you know, you know, but honestly, those populations blow up a lot in the summer in terms of people coming here to visit and traffic and tourism and everything. And, you know, more of an avenue to capitalize on that, you're going to they're going to see the profit margins, I think. And they're also going to see uh, the margins and the gains in terms of their year round members. It's smart business versus what they're doing now is bad business. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, and also, you know, if you have a $140 monthly membership, a lot of people in, if you had a $100 monthly membership uh, and, you know, $10 day passes, I honestly think that they would do better. They would have more people there and they would do better. Uh, and, you know, they would have more people there who would become members, you know, if it was that $40 difference. I think it's it's a high number, you know, it was your lowest number, 140 It's a high number. So, you know, just a couple little things to tweak there. I would say, number one, just to go back and, uh, you know, re-articulate it, the issue with the day passes, they only say you can only buy two a month, but it won't lock people into a membership, or you only have a couple freebies or something like that. No, I think you need to let them have as many day passes if they want. You know, if they want to buy uh, 15 day passes, that's more money that they're spending than if they're bought a monthly membership, and that's their decision. But it also creates an avenue for them. Maybe a month they're going to be traveling for work, and maybe they're not going to get into that club and get down there more than 10 times. And for them, they have the freedom with their work schedule where they can kind of control that. Uh, but maybe they're going to, the next month, be down there 20 times and going to exceed that basic monthly membership in, in that avenue you've created an opportunity for that club to get more money out of that client than if they were just paying that monthly membership uh, so that there's there's space and there's also space for them to observe that and for you and them to have a conversation about that and that to lead to an additional member for your club uh, there's just the space created there and the avenue created there for people through multiple day passes purchased to get to the point where they're comfortable and they're relying on using the equipment for the bodybuilding programming and then they're going to want to get a membership so you know, not having a wall there is counterproductive towards getting memberships. Number two, uh, like I said, the summer population is so big, there needs to be, I think, a another, a, like a lower monthly membership. I would bring it all the way down to 100, and I would be, uh, you know, and I would maybe, you know, day pass is 15, you know, that's that. I don't think they're going to change that. But, you know, if you look hard at trying to, you know, if you buy 10 day passes, you've got a membership. Or, you know, you know what I mean? What? Why isn't there more of an opportunity for people to get the day passes as a path towards membership versus just two and then you have to be a member or you can't come here? That doesn't make sense. Uh, I think it's counterproductive towards getting those longer-term members. It's counterproductive towards building uh, uh, a relationship between a person and a business and a relationship between a business and a community that is uh, something that allows the right sort of pattern of growth. They just want money, and that's something that I think hurts their business model and it also hurts the broader community's health and fitness in terms of their access towards that facility and that facility's uh, equipment. And just lastly, the last thing is the issue with the daycare. You know, you've got people coming in there, they're doing their daycare. You know, if they're dropping their kids off, they monitor a daycare shift, they get a free membership. So basically, all the people who are coming in the club and paying the money, they're paying for the daycare of these other people. So if you're a local young person, whether you're a guy or a girl, and you've got kids and you're dropping your kid off, you basically have a free membership because you're doing some daycare stuff. They have a confused business model there, and it hurts. And they, you know, their daycare business needs to be separate from their gym business. If you know, their gym business is basically all these people are basically paying for the uh, poor planning and the kids of the poor planning young people in the community and all of the daycare and all that other stuff. So they have a problem with their business model, I think, where it's conflicting and, and making it so they can't realize they're